Hello friends, welcome to my new channel, Science with Savi. In this channel, I will be posting videos of science topics, but in a very interesting and amazing way. So that studying is not boring for you and we have a joyful, fun-filled learning experience. I am Savita Jagwani. I am a postgraduate in life sciences and teaching is my passion. My first love is my subject science and for doing what I love to do, I don't need a brand name. The entire world is my stage. I am a mother of two kids, two boys to be more specific. So I'm on my toes all day. And the most challenging thing to do is to make them eat fruits. And especially when it comes to watermelon. They have just one excuse that mama, it has a lot of seeds. I know most of you hate it when you're having a watermelon because of the seeds. But dear children, do you know the seeds are so important for us? And if the seeds were not there, you would not even get the fruits to eat. Yes, you got me right. The topic for today's video is investigating reproduction in plants through seeds. We know that plants reproduce by different ways, but in this video, we will be focusing on plant reproduction by seed. Animal reproduces by giving birth to babies or by laying eggs. But do you know how do the plants reproduce? Plants reproduce in a variety of ways and in this video, we will be discussing the reproduction in plants through seeds. But before that, let me tell you that plants can be of two types. There are some plants which bear flowers and there are some plants which do not bear flowers. So the plants which bear flowers, these flowers develop into the fruits and the fruits contain the seeds. And when the seeds come in contact with the soil in appropriate conditions, it grows into a new plant. But what about those plants which do not have flowers like the pine, the fir, the spruce, these trees do not grow flowers. So how do they reproduce? They do not grow flowers, but they grow cones as you see in the picture. And the seeds are produced in these cones. So seeds are actually very, very important for us. So let's talk about those plants which bear the flowers. So in the picture, I will show you a flower. This is a mango flower. And the mango fruit has developed from this flower. That is this flower of the mango turns into a fruit. And then this fruit contains the seeds. But before doing this, it's very important to understand the structure of the flower. Unless and until we understand the structure of the flower, we won't be able to get that how these flowers develop into the fruit. So let's move to the topic of structure of flower. Well, the flower contains a male reproductive part and a female reproductive part. So why I'm telling you this? Because you need to understand that when the male cells and the female cells fuse together, only then we get an embryo or we get a baby plant or in case of animals, we get a baby animal. Okay, so that fusion of the male part and the female cells are very important. So plants also have the male reproductive part and they also have the female reproductive part and that is present in the flower. Well, in some cases, some plants have the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part in the same flower itself. That is the same flower will have the male cells also and the female cells also. Whereas in some plants, the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part are in different flowers. Like one will be a male flower, other will be a female flower. This happens in case of papaya and watermelon. And most of the flowers like China Rose and these flowers have the male and female in the same flower. So with this, let's move and study the structure of the flower. For understanding the structure of the flower, I have taken this flower, the diagram over here, which has the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part in the same flower itself. So let's start from the beginning. The first part of the flower which you see is the pedicel. The pedicel is a small stalk with which the flower is attached. Just above the pedicel, you find the receptacle. It is a swollen part and all the parts of the flowers are attached to this receptacle. Just above the receptacle comes all the parts of the flower. So we can divide the flower parts into four rows. Okay, Into four rows which you see here. Number one is the sepals. Then come the second row which is the petals. The third role, which is a male reproductive part, and the fourth role, which is a female reproductive part. So let's talk about all these four roles one by one. 
So the first one, first rule is the sepals. The sepals are small leaf-like green soft structures and the most important function of the sepal is that it protects the bud of uh, bud stage of the flower that is when the flower was a bud at that time the sepal covers it and protects it completely okay and even at this this stage of the flower when the flower bud has bloomed to a flower even at this stage the sepals are protecting it so just above the sepal we find the most colorful and the most bright part of the flower that are the petals the petals have a bright color they have fragrance in most of the cases and they look beautiful and this also has a great advantage for the plant because of the bright color of the petals they attract the insects and birds to them and again why these insects should visit the flower it is a very important part which we will be discovering in the later part of our video series okay so now let's move ahead from the petal to the third role that is a male reproductive part the male reproductive part of the flower is called a stamen. As you find here, stamen. I'll give you a hint to learn it. Stamen word has a men, M-E-N, stamen. So this will always help you to learn that men means it is a male reproductive part. So it will be easy for you. This is a small, you know, I'm just tip I'm giving you to learn about which part is a male reproductive part. So stamen has a men. It means it's a male reproductive part. So stamen has two structures. It has a bilobed anther at the top that you see here. Bilobe means there are two lobes joined together like this. Okay, this is the anther and there is a filament which is attached to the anther. The anther contains the pollen sac. The pollen sac has the pollen grains inside it and pollen grain has the male cells. Yes, the male reproductive cell of the flower is inside the pollen grain. So let's move to the fourth rule that is a female reproductive part. The female reproductive part is called the carpel or the pistil. The way the stamen are the male reproductive part, the same way the female reproductive part are called as the carpel or pistil. It has three structures, okay. First one is the stigma. The topmost is the stigma. The stigma leads to a tube which is the style and the style ends in a swollen part and that is the ovary. So I'm repeating again, the carpel or pistil is the female reproductive part. The topmost part is the stigma. The stigma continues into a style and the style ends into a swollen part that is called the ovary. And the ovary contains egg cells or the ovules. Now let me tell you something very interesting is that you know which part of the flower becomes a fruit in future? It is the ovary. The swollen ovary which is a part of the female reproductive part becomes the fruit in the future and the ovules which are present inside they become the seeds. Okay, so when I say that the flower turns into a fruit, it is the ovary which turns into the fruit and the ovules become the seeds. That is why the seeds are present inside the fruit. I hope you got this structure of the flower correctly because by understanding this only we will be able to understand that how, you know, the process goes further and the ovary changes into the fruit. I hope that the structure of flower is completely clear to you and what happens after that that you have to wait for my next video so please like it subscribe it and share with your friends subscribe it positively because only then you will be getting my updates of my videos which are coming up and I promise you we are going to make this learning process really amazing day by day for that I really need your support so we will meet again very soon i'm just coming back in two three days and we will be completing this topic okay we'll taking this further ahead so please like it subscribe it share it and we are going to meet again very soon to complete our topic so by the time stay home stay safe bye bye but there are some fruits which i love which do not have seeds like a banana where are the seeds of the banana strawberry where are the seeds of the strawberry? Do you want to know about it? Wait for my next video. See you soon.